Many people have told me they're amazed that so many scientists can live with the dishonesty of the best in the field dictum. I think the reason for their amazement is that they think science is still as it was in the beginning, the science of Newton, Euler, Dalton, Faraday and Maxwell. They still have the view that Sir Henry Dale had, the view that science is a devoted search for objective truth. I think this must have been the view that William Broad and Nicholas Wade held when they wrote their book, Betrayers of the Truth, Fraud and Deceit in the Halls of Science. They must have had the idea that science was still the original Christian discipline of seeking the truth about God's creation. Perhaps that's not really surprising because the secular humanist establishment doesn't often advertise to the public the fact that it's become something very different. It doesn't usually trumpet the fact that it denies the existence of truth and seeks only useful theories. It's happy for students and school children and their parents to carry on believing it does have at least something to do with truth. Broad and Wade's book is full of cases of scientists forging papers, writing up experiments they never performed, plagiarising the work of others, lying about test results and shameful dishonesty of every kind. They were particularly shocked by the prevalence of lies and fraud in medical research. They portray fraud in medicine as more prevalent than in most branches of science and potentially having the very worst consequences. But I think the biggest reason for the dishonesty of secular science coming as such a shock to so many people is that most people no longer read their Bibles, or if they do, they don't believe them. We are warned in Ephesians 6 verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The battle is global and ongoing. The fact that most Christians are blissfully unaware of it and most secular humanists pour scorn on it doesn't make it any less real. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And Lucifer is the father of lies. The universal battle is between truth and lies. The secular humanist scientific establishment pretends that science has nothing to do with spiritual matters, especially when it puts on a charming front to the general public. But let's look at what Dorsey Hager, for example, said in his inaugural lecture as president of the American Geological Society. Early geologists fought to free people from the myths of biblical creation. Many millions still live in mental bondage controlled by ignorant ranters who accept the Bible as the last word in science. Sounds to me like a strenuous attack against the Bible. Chief among the early geologists Hager was talking about is Charles Lyell. In A Trip Through Time, Principles of Historical Geology, we read, Lyell launched a crusade to lay to rest once and for all the idea that the earth and all things on it were the product of divine creation. His crusade, his holy war, is against the God of the Bible. And what about what Lyle wrote himself? In his letter to his publisher, George Scrope, about his proposed book, he said the aim was to free the science of geology from Moses. In his letter to Charles Darwin, he wrote, I have destroyed the book of Genesis without mentioning the Bible. So geology seems firmly entrenched in a war against the Bible. What about biology? Richard Dawkins claimed in The Blind Watchmaker that Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist 
and in lecture after lecture he has claimed that God is the worst character in the whole of fiction. And remember what Nobel Prize winning biologist George Wald said. That leaves us with only one possible conclusion, that life arose as a supernatural creative act of God. I will not accept that philosophically because I do not want to believe in God. Therefore, I choose to believe in that which I know is scientifically impossible, spontaneous generation arising to evolution. What a strange mixture of truth and falsehood. Knowing the truth, but openly admitting that he chooses the lie. It explains Giuseppe Sermonti's displeasure when he said, if I am interested in combating Darwinism, it is not that it is a false theory. There are many false theories throughout the world. It is because it is dishonest. What shocked me also is that the supporters of Darwinism do not believe it themselves. And this refusal to acknowledge the truth is part of all branches of secular science today. Richard Lewontin put it quite forcefully in his statement that we've looked at before. We take the side of science, in spite of the patent absurdity of some of its constructs, in spite of its failure to fulfil many of its extravagant promises of health and life, in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just-so stories, because we have a commitment to materialism. Moreover, that materialism is an absolute, for we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. The confidence of the secular establishment that they could devise materialistic hypotheses was so strong that it no doubt seemed reasonable to them to institute the best in the field dictum. If any observation contradicts a hypothesis or theory, it remains valid until a materialistic alternative has been accepted by the scientific establishment. But as their secular theories have been shown to be untrue, one after another, and no materialistic alternatives have been found, they're stuck with having to claim that soundly disproved, just so stories are facts of science. It's not that no alternatives are available. We've seen in the past episodes that the Bible has very good explanations for the observations. Observations of astronomy, geology, biology and life in general. But those explanations can't be even mentioned in the world of secular science. Because their commitment to materialism cannot allow a divine foot in the door. The one thing the father of lies cannot allow is truth. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.